Uh, my name is Mark Freed, <coughs> and I work for Oxfam Canada. Uh, uh, there are two make or break issues for developing countries in the Copenhagen talks. You've just heard of, uh, from Dale about the 2020 emission reductions targets. That's one of them. The other is just as big, and that is financing for climate action in vulnerable countries. Canada has committed to paying its fair share uh, uh, of helping vulnerable countries adapt to climate change and to reduce their own emissions. In Trinidad on the weekend, as you know, Canada signed on to the Fast Start Plan for financing of up to $10 billion US per year up through 2012. Uh, in Copenhagen, developing countries have made it clear that there will be no deal without a financing plan for the years that follow. Why is this? The poorest countries in the world are currently facing dire situation because of climate change. There's a sharp rise in hunger due to crop failures, spread of disease, water shortages, a sharp rise in, in climate-related disasters, particularly drought and flood, mass migration, and resultant conflict. You have to un understand that these changes are happening already. The incidence of climate-related disaster has quadrupled since the 1980s. Malaria and dengue fever insect-borne diseases are spreading to new areas where people have no immunity and the healthcare system is not prepared for it. According to the World Health Organization, 150 deaths, excuse me, 150,000 deaths per year can be attributed to climate change. There are 26 million people in the world who have already been displaced by climate change, and a million more are added to that role each year by storms, flood, and drought. And let's no mis make no mistake about it, as John said, this is caused by our pollution. Our emissions are killing the poorest people in the world and destroying their livelihoods. On the table in Copenhagen is a pl long-term plan to achieve the predictable, sustainable financing that developing countries need to make the long-term investments to adapt. How much are we talking about? Uh, Canada is going to have to acknowledge the scale of the financing needed in Copenhagen. The global needs uh, are estimated to be between 50 and 100 U.S. 50 and 100 billion dollars U.S. dollars per year. Uh, and what is Canada's fair share of that? Minister Prentice, we, th I, we think, is lowballing it when he says it's two percent as our fair share. Two percent is just our share of the current global emissions of greenhouse gases. Our responsibility for the problem is actually much higher if you consider the cumulative emissions in, in, the, uh, 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 in the atmosphere. And certainly, uh, we are among the top 10 emitters if you figure it on a per capita basis or an absolute basis or a cumulative basis. And also, our capacity to pay is much higher. We're number four on the UN's Human Development Index. We have the soundest economy in the G8. In other global efforts, like the fight against AIDS or responding to emergencies, Canada always contributes at minimum 3% and often as much as 8% or more. For example, to the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB and Malaria, Canada has contributed nearly 5% in each of the past seven years. For the UN Central Emergency Revolving Fund, Canada has contributed 8.4% in each of the past three years. There are other examples I could give you. We believe Canada's modest fair share falls into the range of 3 to 4 percent of the global total. If we apply that to the, that fair share to the $10 billion fast track fund, uh, we're talking about $300 million a year, half of which should go to adaptation. Let's remember that adaptation is just part of the picture. It's also mit helping mitigation in developing countries. And as of 2013, we're talking about a minimum of a billion dollars a year, perhaps as much as five billion per year for adaptation only. That is to help, and we'll be require more to help poor countries reduce their emissions. Now, Canadians will want to know how the government intends to pay for this. In the, in the negotiations, developing countries have been very clear, and we agree that it should not come out of the aid budget. Last year, the government committed $100 million to adaptation quite generously, uh, but took it right from funds designated by Parliament for fighting poverty. We, we understand that adaptation efforts should be coherent with development assistance, but people should not have to forego education or health care simply because we are paying to clean up problems caused by our pollution. 
a research paper that we're releasing today by Oxfam and Pembina, and I have copies here for you, uh, suggests a better way for financing adaptation costs by setting aside a portion of the revenues from the auction of emissions allowances in a cap and trade system, which Canada has said we are going to develop. This is the way the United States is going. As uh, Dale's mentioned, the Waxman-Markey uh, law sets aside 7% of the, uh, uh, the auctions, excuse me, of the emissions allowances to support developing countries. Auctioning is part of uh, uh, nearly every cap and trade system proposed or in existence. We calculate by that by setting aside the revenue from between 2% and 9% of the allowances, Canada could raise the one to $5 billion per year required. I have copies of the report here for you. A second adaptation issue to be resolved in Copenhagen is how the adaptation money should be managed. I'd be happy to get into that and answer that in, in questions if you wish, but uh, due to time, let me go to the conclusion. Uh, in Copenhagen, Mr. Harper and Mr. Prentice must acknowledge that we have an obligation to help the poorest countries survive the ravages caused by our pollution. We're looking for two things. They should announce that our fair share will be between three to four percent of the global effort, and they should pledge not to pay for this out of the aid budget, and then make good on that promise in the next federal budget. As I said, people shouldn't have to give up health care and education because we are paying to clean up the mess we caused. I look forward to your questions. Je serai heureux de répondre à vos questions en français.